Today we are going to talk about decimals. Any number can be written as a decimal, but there are two types of decimal, and these are as follows, recurring decimals and exact decimals. A recurring decimal is a decimal that ends with a pattern of numbers. An exact decimal is a decimal that ends with a single digit. Our learning objective for today are the relationships between fractions, percentages and decimals, ordering decimals, adding decimals, and subtracting decimals. So let's start off with the first topic, the relationship between fractions, percentages and decimals. If we start off with the relationship between fractions and decimals, we will break down decimals into the two types of decimals mentioned before, recurring and exact. The converting of exact decimals into fractions are slightly more simpler than converting recurring decimals. An exact decimal can be converted into a fraction depending on the exact number of decimal places it has. For example, 0.1 is an exact decimal. In order to turn it into a fraction, we can see that it only has one decimal place. This means that the denominator will have one zero making it ten. Therefore 0.1 can be written as one tenth. Now let's work out 0.15. 0.15 has two decimal places. We therefore know that the denominator will have two decimal places, and this will make our fraction 15 one hundredths. What would happen if our decimal was 0.375? We can see that it has three decimal places, meaning that the denominator will have three zeros. This would make the fraction 375 one thousandths. We will now take a look at the relationship between percentages and decimals. This is slightly simpler than converting decimals into fractions. All you need to do is divide the answer by 100. How would you convert 19% into a decimal? You would take the number 19, forgetting about the percentage sign for the moment, and you would divide 19 by 100, taking the decimal point two places to the back, and that would give you 0.19. A further example using 125% is that you would divide 125 by 100. You would then move the decimal points two places to the back and that would give you 1.25. We will now look at recurring decimals. A recurring decimal, as mentioned previously, is a decimal that ends with a pattern of numbers. There is an easy way of working out whether a fraction will be a corresponding or recurring decimal. We will do this by conducting prime factorization of the denominator. For example, if you take the fraction 1 ninth, you would need to decide what the prime factors of 9 are. In this instance, the prime factors of 9 are 3 times 3. A quick way to tell whether a fraction will be corresponding or a recurring decimal is to look at the prime factor. Anything other than 2 or a 5 will result in a recurring decimal. 1 ninth equals 3 times 3 equals 0.1111. Therefore, this shows that 1 ninth has a corresponding recurring decimal. Ordering decimals. Ordering decimals basically means putting decimals in order of size. In an exam question, you may be given a group of numbers of decimals and be asked to put them in order of smallest to largest or vice versa. For example, you are given this group of numbers and you need to sort the smallest to the largest. 0 0.9, 0 0.08, 0 0.125, 0 0.0056. There are a number of things to recognize at first. You would look at the number of decimal places and start with the one with the highest number of decimal places. The highest number of decimal places would be the smallest. The lowest number of decimal places would be the largest. Using the example above, this would mean that the smallest number is 0.0056 and the highest number is 0.9. Once you have looked at the decimal places, you would then look at the actual digits themselves. Number one would be the smallest, number nine would be the largest. So if we were to rearrange the group of numbers we were given from smallest to largest, it would read as 0 0.0056, 0 0.08, 0 0.125, 0 0.9. Let's move on to adding decimals. Adding decimals is really simple if you follow this one method. Here are a set of decimals, 0 0.1, 0 0.03, 0 0.45. The first thing I am going to do is put the decimals on top of each other, ensuring that the decimal points are lined up. 0 0.1, 0 0.03, 0 0.45, 0 0.58. You would add the digits together, giving you this answer. This method applies for every single example that you get, as long as you make sure that the decimals are in alignment with each other. Subtracting decimals. This works in a similar way. 
For example, here are a set of decimals, 0 0.8, 0 0.03. The first thing I'm going to do is put the decimals on top of each other once again, as I did when I added them up, 0 0.8, 0 0.03. Subtract the numbers from each other, remembering that if the bottom number is more than the top, you will need to borrow from the number opposite.